Mr. Beast. Crypto scam. Mr. Beast might be one of the most successful shady dudes in crypto, allegedly. This is a wallet that allegedly belongs to Mr. Beast. Before I start the video, this is going to be talking about some pretty serious, some heavy topics. But before that, I'd like to do a little palate cleanser. So I'm going to introduce a uh, dog as a as a main character in the video. Please, round of applause for dog. Thank you. Oh, no, he ran away. Okay, he just stole the Among Us sock and he walked away. So yeah, we've got dog as the main character in the video. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be in the, uh, the rear of the shot for. So talented. He's such a talented boy. He only knows how to catch the Among Us suck though, so we're gonna we're gonna teach him some more tricks. I can tell in the background he wants me to like play fetch with him and stuff, but uh, I really need to get this video out of the way, so I will try to not make it longer than it needs to be. So first of all, are you surprised that I'm doing another Mr. Beast video? No, no, you're not. Honestly, on this channel, it's basically a bi-weekly update talking about him and the Lunchly brothers. But this video is more centered around Jimmy and his business, mostly because what's happened with Logan Paul and KSI has died down. For the most part, I will talk about them later on in the video. Over the past couple of days, I know I haven't really been uploading much. We put out like a Fousey video yesterday. And before that, I basically took a week off to the point that my subreddit actually thought that I passed away due to a head-on collision with a car. But apparently... Mr. Beast has been arrested. But again, I've heard some really bizarre claims like Mr. Beast being arrested, Mr. Beast being arrested for insider trading, and then supposedly his friends are catching strays as well. That there are so many twists and turns to this update video. Now, first of all, I would like to share that Mr. Beast actually did an internal review of his own company. Now, keep in mind, this is a company that he hired with the whole Ava Chris Tyson situation. If you remember, Ava was accused of some very very bad things and she made a tweet saying you know i've chose to leave the company and then mr beast came back and said no we kicked you out and you're being investigated this was that investigation and it is now concluded now i could read out the entire statement and i would love to to pad out the video so i get paid more but i'll just get to the point the investigation basically said it didn't find any claims around the uh the no-no word the word that begins with p or even other general claims about the company's practices to be true however though they did find that there were several cases of workplace harassment and they were asked to basically resolve those appropriately. In return, Mr. Beast was asked to hire a chief of staff. That could be a CEO, CPO, CFO, you know, etc. And then also require mandatory harassment training for all employees. On top of that as well, they were asked to develop more policies in the employee handbook. Also to create an anonymous hotline that employees could basically use to complain about other employees or bring up any problems they had. And also to terminate people that didn't follow the workplace policy. Now, none of this seems to be like game breaking i mean this is basically just pretty standard practices in any kind of business and also keep in mind as well mr beast's company is expanding rapidly so it seems pretty necessary to have all of these put into place mostly because again it is a very fast growing company and it's a weird company because it was started by a youtuber not like an old head ceo but again this statement really isn't saying much it's basically just uh, exonerating him saying that uh, he's basically innocent on all the online claims and i think it'll be really interesting to see if he responds to these claims because as we know the investigation now is pretty much over this obviously didn't stop people from renting on twitter basically saying that he did an investigation himself and found that he did no wrongdoing. You know, like the meme of Obama photoshopped, like giving himself his own medal. That's basically what Twitter thought about it. So next up are a couple of uh, interesting situations that came out about Mr. Beast that don't paint him as the, you know, family-friendly character that he wants to portray himself as. So the first thing was a report spreading around, which I'm pretty sure you've heard about, that he was holding around $23 million in various crypto wallets that may or may not be linked to insider trading. Apparently as well, this was over 50 crypto wallets. So there was like basically, this insane amount of money spread across various amounts of wallets. I've even seen people call Mr. Beast uh, Mr. Stewart, because if you don't know, Martha Stewart was infamous for basically going to jail for insider trading. Essentially, there was a team of crypto researchers, and they found that there were various crypto wallets connected to Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast did not shy away from being a crypto bro in the past. So the researchers, who I assume to be no more than Reddit detectives, basically found, and they were able to track down his wallets that he had previously doxxed. Now, I know... 
most of you do not touch crypto. You will not understand the buzzwords, the terms. It's it's like trying to learn Latin in reverse. So I will really try to condense this down. Essentially, they noticed that he had a ton of tokens from Superverse, which was a gaming NFT marketplace. Now he sold those for $7.4 million and then another for $11.4 million. Now I'm unsure if anything's going to happen to him or there'll be more in this investigation, but I really do feel at the minute, again, not to be a contrarian, I really do think Mr. Beast should be criticized, but I feel like anyone can say anything about him right now. And because of the hate he's getting, it will just stick whether there's actual substance or not. But when there's large amounts of money like that being moved around and it could be possible insider trading, that is definitely when law enforcement will get involved because they love money. If, if you can see the dog over there, by the way, he's very interested about the Mr. Beast video so much so that he passed out five minutes ago. Also, on top of all these insane allegations, uh, Mr. Beast was speeding. And no, that isn't some kind of new gen term for collaborating with iShow Speed, even though he has done that quite a lot. You remember that one time when you donated uh, to my stream? Mr. Beast donated oh. $1.99 through Super Chat. Big black monkey boy, big Mr. Black But this is all the way back in 2018 when he was arrested for illegal speed racing in North Carolina. At the time, Jimmy was 19 and he was driving 122 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone at around half two in the morning. There's actually even a mugshot to go along with his arrest. Now, Jimmy wasn't the only one speeding as his friend was also arrested at the same time. And apparently his friend as well, when he was arrested, when the cops searched his car, they found an open container of alcohol and a gun. Thankfully, Mr. Beast is still family friendly as ever because there was no container of alcohol or any kind of gun in his car. He was also allegedly held with a $100,000 bond at the time as well. Now, out of everything I've talked about, this is like the biggest nothing burger. Should he have spared? No, not really. A again, very brave statement. Don't speed on the road, guys. You can endanger other people. It's like only brave statements on this channel. But yeah, like out of everything I've talked about, this is basically the biggest like nothing burger. It's something he did when he was 19 as well. And again, this also happened all the way back in 2018. Basically, out of everything we're talking about, I think this is like the least consequential one. I mean, that was back in 2018. Jimmy could have changed a lot. I mean, you know, there's other allegations he's going through right now that are more serious, but at least he's not speeding anymore. It really does make me wonder, like, if he does, like, one huge giant response video trying to, like, you know, squash everything, if that would be, like, a, a little one to two minute segment in that video. But again, I'm not even sure if he's going to respond anymore because, like I said earlier, the internal investigation basically found uh, next to no wrongdoing just to set better things in place. Now, there is a really interesting rumor going around that has absolutely no substance. And again, I've said this like three times in the video now, people will use anything against you. And the more hated you are, the more likely it is to stick. The less people that ask questions saying, where is the context? Where's your source? Mr. Beast is under so much hate and fire right now. You could basically say, anything about him and people will believe it. And there was a rumor going around that Carl Jacobs, a friend of Mr. Beast, uh, was arrested and put in jail. Carl for Mr. Beast has just been arrested and taken into the county jail. Now, yes, that is a real thing that was being spread around and a lot of people believed it for a brief moment. Essentially, there was this random guy on TikTok that claimed that Carl Jacobs was in jail due to connections of, uh, cheese pizza um this is after all these videos have been going viral of uh, the whole group chat of them leaking images on telegram as you all know and apparently they found this inside the telegram chats it might have been the chat that rosanna pancino was sent it might have been another telegram chat but yeah basically people were saying online that carl jacobs was arrested now i'm not going to drop the name of the guy who made the tiktok because personally i believe he deserves no attention whatsoever but the entire video that this guy made was basically just saying stuff about carl without any claims of this actually happening no proof but it is proven that chandler was not involved so that is a good that's good news but this guy right here is one of the main people. He also deleted his Telegram account, um, which I'm sure you guys all saw in the video, like the deleted account. But yeah. And it actually got so bad that there were actual news articles covering this as fact. I'd also like to point out the guy is like a total coward. He basically did a follow-up video saying, this blew up so much out of control, guys. Oh, and then he even quickly says that this is an inside joke gone too far. Oh my gosh, I am dead. The inside joke went too far, chat. That is awesome. Obviously, he wasn't arrested, but I literally looked up his name this morning and all these came up. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Yeah, it's really funny. Uh, You say inside joke. 
I say defamation lawsuit. I mean, if anything, if Mr. Beast chooses to respond, he will definitely use this video as a way to show that like a lot of people online have been lying about certain aspects. It's not going to get him off the hook, no way, but it will make it apparent that there are so many unreliable narrators out there. Oh, also quick little update on that TikTok guy. Uh, he recently, while I was recording, posted another video, basically flat out saying that Carl Jacobs was not arrested and it was a huge bit. In enjoy admitting to the easiest defamation lawsuit of all time. Carl Jacobs was indeed not arrested. Oh, do not take what you see on Twitter with the truth. But y'all are still defending bad people. Like, whether he was arrested or not, that doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so, yeah, I don't quite understand that. One thing I do absolutely hate as well is the TikTok of this guy saying that Carl Jacobs was not arrested, only has 70 likes. Meanwhile, the original video of him talking about Carl Jacobs being arrested has nearly half a million likes. So it really just shows, like... You it's like a petting zoo behind me, just animals running around everywhere. It really shows that, like, you could basically just make a complete lie about Mr. Beast and it will get traction. And a lot of people right now are doing this for clout and stuff. Again, like, I don't mean to be like a Mr. Beast, you know, slurper or anything like that. There are some really, really bad allegations here. But obviously, I do also want to talk about the brief examples of people that, I mean, if anything, what these clout goblins are doing is really bad. And I don't think these clout goblins realize what they're doing because if they really think that Mr. Beast should be criticized, if they really don't like him, what you're doing by lying about him and his friends is giving him a pass to hit back at you and make his response video even stronger, which obviously doesn't help the other people that are doing legitimate investigations that they've probably been doing for like months behind the scenes. I also want to point out as well, at the time that Carl Jacobs was reportedly arrested, he made like an Instagram post. This could have been like a, a scheduled post or something to be fair, but if anything, to me personally, it shows that no, he wasn't arrested. This was just a clout grab. I do like how I've taken time out of the video to defend Carl Jacobs when the only interaction with him I've had is me posting a snide Red Dead Redemption 2 meme. What is this place? Who oh, picked truck? Dude, this that is some me. Ohio stuff, bro. Will you shut the hell up? Get the hell up! To which he DM'd me, saying, what's all this then? And also after that, he never actually followed me back, so... It's a bit, it's a bit awkward. <laughs> Now, although the next section here isn't directly about Mr. Beast, I think it's quite interesting to talk about Prime, which is also included in the Lunchly box, which apparently, by the look of Twitter on the minute, has a 50% chance to contain mold in it. <laughs> <laughs> and this section involves a couple of notable people who have spoken very highly of Mr. Beast in the past. That is Logan Paul and Ludwig. Now, recently, Ludwig did a stream where he tried various YouTuber food-related items, which, of course, included trying Lunchly, Prime, and Feastables and putting them onto a tier list. Now, while eating the uh, surprisingly non-moldy Lunchly, he talks about his experience with Prime and why he doesn't drink it as often as he previously did. Now, Ludwig basically said that when he drank Prime, he'd get a buzz off it. He would, you know, he couldn't drink too much of it. He'd start getting, like, like a funny feeling. Placebic thing? But I would start buzzing two primes got me feeling weird i don't know why i don't i think my body just didn't handle that fucking high level of i don't know potassium or some shit and then he brought this up directly to logan when they met in person for one of the mr beast challenges you know that one where they had like all the youtubers together and you could see logan paul pressing his hands against the glass always making sure there was a bottle of prime in shot and logan basically told ludwig that he drinks multiple primes a day and he feels fine i, I talked to logan about this but i asked him straight up i was like yo you ever have like a few primes in a day and you start buzzing off that shit because I never looked it up. I just stopped drinking it after that. And Logan, obviously in Logan fashion, he's like, no, nah, dude, I'll have like fucking six, seven a day. Fucking don't even bat an eye. And I was like, I was like, okay. All right, damn. No bias, by the way. It's not like it's his product or anything. And apparently as well, on set during the Mr. Beast video, no one was allowed any drinks or anything, so they couldn't cheat. Logan was the only person that had an exemption, which kind of, that makes me laugh a little bit, thinking that he had some kind of contract. Like, if I'm going to appear in your video, I'm going to need to bring five, no less, five bottles of Prime onto set. Now, the next part, the only reason Ludwig found this out is because during a challenge, he decided to cheat. He decided to steal a little bit of Logan Paul's Prime to help a friend out. He had a Prime on the set with him. We were doing a contest. Now, this was during a Squid Game cookie section. Obviously, if you add liquid onto the cookie, it's going to dissolve easier. That's the reason why there were no liquids allowed, because people could use it to cheat. And Logan Paul was the only one who was allowed to have a drink on the set. They took everybody else's drinks away because they didn't want us to use water to cheat. Being a fucking cheater, I decided to grab Logan Paul's prime and I wanted to use it to like help my friends on my team 
beat the puzzle. That was what I was trying to do. So I sneakily grabbed his prime and I was going to put some in the cap. And the funny thing is when Ludwig tasted the prime, he found out it was just water. It was filled with water. But when I did, I noticed the color was weird and I took a sip. It was water. Logan Paul replaced the prime with water. So that's the reason why Logan is able to drink so many prime bottles every single day, you know, in Instagram posts, uh, when he's doing podcasts. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen that infamous clip on a podcast where it just looks like the bottle's completely empty and he's still trying to drink out of it anyway, just for the sake of product placement. Ludwig also doubles down and says that, you know, he works with Red Bull, as you've seen, like every single stream, he's always got like a fridge in the background. He said that he would never do that with Red Bull. He would never, you know, empty out a can and replace it with water just to shield the company. Say what you will about me, I've never put water in a fucking Red Bull can. I drink that shit straight up. I slurp that shit down. Now, the problem is when you're a streamer and you say something on Online, there's a chance that people will clip it whether you intentionally are clip farming or you're doing it you know you're just having a normal conversation and people choose to clip it because it's interesting that's what happened with Ludwig's clip someone clipped it and it got shared online I mean I even found it I think there's a YouTube video now uh, a, a guy's channel and he's only got three videos all about Ludwig and I think that the clip itself is on over half a million views right now and unfortunately it went so viral that Logan saw it and Logan wanted to share his side of the story now he chose to respond on his Logan Paul vlogs account if you can see there uh, the profile picture, it really doesn't do him justice. This is definitely before he had like the work done, the facial hair, the hair transplant. He kind of just looks like, like a, a bit of a mannequin in the picture. I mean, I shouldn't be the one throwing shade. I look like a 40 year old lesbian, but still it, it's not really the best picture to respond so professionally. So here in this comment uh, or, or this coping, as I like to call it, he's claiming in the comment that he basically refilled his prime bottle with water when he ran out of prime. So I love, I love this cope where it's like, he was drinking so much Prime. He was enjoying it so much that he just had to get more, but he couldn't. You know, not implying that he probably had like a, an entire crate of Prime bought just for the Mr. Beast shoot. Basically, he was saying there was no more Prime left, so he only had to drink water. So sad. It's okay, Logan. Once you swap over to sparkling water, you can never go back. He then goes on to say that if he threw out the bottle of Prime that was empty, it would be a wasted product placement in a Mr. Beast video. Now, this is the only part of Logan Paul's cope defense that I actually believe because he is that rent-free about marketing. It's so obvious that, you know, when he took some downtime from YouTube, he took like a business course or something. Because whenever this guy is in a public place, whether he's watching like a basketball game or competing in a, another YouTuber's video, he always makes sure to have a bottle of Prime in shot. He also calls Ludwig a classic hater, saying that he had previously mentioned that Logan was rigged and left on purpose. Now, it is true that in the past, Ludwig did have a conspiracy theory that the game was rigged in favor of Logan Paul, and he shared a lot of examples behind the scenes as to why he believed that. However, he did also clarify that this was solely just a conspiracy theory, and he wasn't going to contest with, like, Jimmy directly or anything like that. I have a conspiracy theory, or maybe I should say I had a conspiracy theory, that this competition in some way was rigged for Logan Paul. 48 of the 50 people rode to the site together on a bus. Two of the people who didn't were Logan Paul and KSI. They were already at the building, which I found weird. And I'm going to say the exact same thing. It is just a conspiracy theory. But also at the same time, a couple months later down the road, they became serious business partners. So, I mean, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I, I just think it's a little bit weird. And then on Halloween, Ludwig reacted to Logan Paul's comment and calls him out for suing CoffeeZilla. I think it has so many downvotes that it's literally the final comment. You also thought I rigged the game. I didn't. You also thought I left on purpose. I didn't stop being a hater. I think Logan makes a lot of sense here. The only thing I would say in response, why did you sue CoffeeZilla? Why did you sue CoffeeZilla after thanking him for exposing the, the crypto fraud that you're part of? Are you scared of what Future thinks he's going to say? Why are you suing CoffeeZilla? Why are you replying to me joking and talking about a fucking water bottle scandal and not replying to CoffeeZilla and you suing him into silence why are, what are you are you scared of him saying things why are you suing coffeezilla as we know logan is someone that obviously he had a lot of controversy with the whole the japanese forest incident i know that's really underselling it but obviously after that he basically built up his reputation in various means a lot of the internet never forgave him but one thing that these huge monolithic creators always learn about the internet is there's always more audience to reach out to which one thing i do want to bring up this is like my own conspiracy theory i've seen that mr beast and his team are actually doing a lot more indian based content now 
now because India probably has no idea about any of the allegations or the controversy. So what YouTubers do tend to do when they get in hot water, if they can't, you know, get their fan base back, they try to find and create and grow a new fan base. Am I saying that that is what Mr. Beast is doing? No, but I just find it quite weird that with everything going on, there's a huge push for India at the minute. I always found Logan Paul's fan base very strange. Uh, not the people in general, but like what his fan base is because, you know, he's got the impulsive podcast. He gets decent views on there. On Instagram, he gets like hundreds and of thousands of likes. He's got insane reach there. But then you go onto places like Twitter and the guy is like barely breaking a couple thousand likes. I, I mean, for the average Twitter user, that's where they reply to themselves saying, oh my God, bang a tweet. And then they link their YouTube channel that no one clicks on. But he has like basically zero reach on Twitter. So it's very telling of where his fan base actually come from. And after Ludwig made the jab about CoffeeZilla, which was obviously a really disgusting lawsuit to even launch on this guy in the first place, Logan then did what he always does, which is using his podcast as a platform to cry about it. Basically couples therapy because he's sitting around a bunch of people that are going to suck him off anyway and basically just crying to them and monetizing it. In one of the challenges, he admitted that he went to go cheat because it was the cookie challenge from Squid Games. The cookie challenge from Squid Games. So bro, he goes, yeah, I'm a cheater. Of course I'm a cheater. I went to go cheat and I went to go take a sip of Logan's Prime. And he goes, but in it, was water. Here, Logan focuses on the point that Ludwig exposed himself as a cheater. Cheater in quotation marks, like he was trying to use some liquid to basically, you know, try to beat the game faster than everyone else. Is it still cheating? Yes, probably. But I think it's that comedic and drawn out and the punchline is that he wasn't even drinking Prime. That kind of nullifies any kind of cheating in my book. And then he goes on to say that Ludwig was apparently trying to expose Logan like Dog Pack 404 or Rosanna Pansino. Let's dissect this actually. I'm gonna dive in here for a second. <laughs> Rosanna and Dog Pack style in the same way that by trying trying to expose someone else, they ended up exposing themselves. This dude Ludwig accused me of cheating in this game, accused me of rigging Mr. Beast challenge. He accused me of cheating. And then in this clip, admits to fucking cheating. Not only that, but he also claims, with no proof by the way, that Ludwig saw Logan Paul drink copious bottles of Prime on set when they were together for around 36 hours. I was in the box with you Ludwig for 36 hours, bro. <laughs> you saw me drink Prime afterwards. You, a lot of it. A lot of it. I do like this Cobra. It's like, no, no, he, he saw me drink it. He saw me, he saw me drink it. No, no. Hey, Ludwig, I, I'm drinking this prime, right? I'm drinking it. And of course, Logan did the low hanging fruit of calling out Ludwig for his Red Bull sponsorship and saying that Red Bull tastes like gasoline compared to prime. And then, of course, at the end of it, he goes, huh, see what me? I really drink Red Bull. Huh, I love it. His sponsor. <laughs> oh, he's like, <laughs> I really drink that. I'm like, bro, if you... Compared to Prime, Red Bull tastes like actual gasoline. Fun fact, by the way, uh, not a lot of people know this. People say that they like the taste of Red Bull. The taste of Red Bull, it's actually meant to taste like ass because it tricks you into thinking you're actually getting more energy from it because obviously, you know, you eat foods you don't like. You know they're good for you. You eat foods that you like. Bad foods, you feel like crap after. So yeah, it's funny that he calls that out and when there's actual research into why Red Bull tastes bad. Do I think it tastes bad? It's kind of eh. I don't, I, honestly, I'll just go for a black coffee any day over a Red Bull, but still, like, I don't think the taste is revolting, but I think it's been tweaked to be just a little bit kind of off-putting because you think that it's giving you more energy than it actually is. And at the end of this coping, he just calls Ludwig an outright liar, a hypocrite, and a blockheaded bitch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you hear that? No, I know. That was bad. That was like, that was like a Minecraft insult. Oh, he doesn't even want to look at the camera anymore, man. That, that was bad. Jesus. He, he's a fucking hypocritical, yeah, well, lying, it, blockhead beta bitch, bro. Well, like, why are you making shit up? Well, I even, I tried so hard. I tried so hard to like this guy. Interestingly enough, we have a new challenger involving themselves in the drama. XQC. Did anyone ask for this? No, not really. Now, the reason why XQC weighed in, apart from clips, is because of the fact he appeared in a game show called Juiced. And Felix, XQC, no association with Felix Kielberg, PewDiePie, he basically tells Logan that Ludwig plays the best card to not be the most controversial person ever. And apparently this is very Ludwig of him to do. I can read people a little bit. Ludwig, I, I, I work with him. He's actually a pretty close, close, friend, uh, close friend of mine at the time. Well, he kind of still is, we just don't talk anymore because I don't, I don't live there and we don't really interact that much. The thing with Ludwig, and I always say this publicly, and I don't mind, I don't think he minds I say that because he's never been mad about me saying it, right? But Ludwig is like a big, uh, he's like a big PR guy, right? He just plays the, 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 the best card available. One thing that I'll notice about the streaming world until like the day I retire when I'm a rotting old man is you could be like the most friendly, wholesome chunga streamer imaginable. But the problem is if you're not giving opinions out there, if you're not, you know, being at least a little bit controversial, you'll never get out your box. You'll never get clipped. One thing I do find really funny though about Logan Paul when he called him, you know, a blockheaded bitch that was covered in a Dexoso article and Ludwig's only input was replying to it saying LOL in all caps. So in conclusion, I know I talked 
talked about Mr. Beast a lot in the opening, and then the second half was more about, you know, Logan and the drama that he got into. Is this the end for Mr. Beast? Again, brave statement. No, I don't think so. What I think they're doing right now, personally, and this is, again, my kind of schizo game theory, I think they're really trying to branch out to India and maybe to even other countries that, you know, have a new untapped audience. I don't think Mr. Beast is trying to run away from the allegations. I just think it's more like, do I sit here with people that don't like me and people that are criticizing me, or do I try and find a new audience? Is that a good thing to do? No, obviously it's not. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say that that's a good thing at all. But again, I really do think that this situation is just gonna keep getting worse and worse until there is some kind of statement or announcement put out by Mr. Beast. I I'm not really saying, like, you know, he puts out, I mean, Jesus, could you imagine if he put out, like, a twit longer or something? That'd be awful. I think, and I hope personally, he's gonna do, like, a sit-down response video. You know, I did my response back in 2020. Maybe he can do, like, you know, my response part two or something. And also, I'm gonna end the video with possibly the biggest question of the year. Is Chandler okay? No one's really checking up on Chandler. I hope he's doing all right.